A Central Nebraska native breaks down barriers, serving up agriculture on a global scale. Coming up here on NTV's Grow, more from Ambassador Darcy Vetter and how the Hamilton County native leads the way on a major foreign trade deal. Plus more on Nebraska's recent trade mission to Japan and big honors for the state ag director. You're watching NTV's Grow. Chinese officials agreed to buy 13.18 metric tons of soybeans. These are U.S. soybeans and a chairman of the American Soybean Association says the amount China will import is roughly equal to all the soybeans grown in Iowa. China uses most of the soybeans it imports to feed livestock and poultry. It is unknown if it will change soybean prices though. Raised on a central Nebraska farm and now leading the way when it comes to agricultural issues on a global scale. NTV's Grow co-host Steve White has more. Thinking about how we can get the best deal for U.S. farmers, ranchers, and agribusiness. Taking lessons learned on the Nebraska farm to the negotiating table. It's really helpful for me to know what kinds of decisions farmers have to make and to take those into account as we try and negotiate trade deals uh, with other countries. Ambassador Darcy Vetter, a Hamilton County native, is the United States chief negotiator on agricultural issues like the Trans-Pacific Partnership. What we've seen at the negotiating table is a real um, a real sense of purpose, a real sense of drive to get this deal done. Congressman Adrian Smith invited Vetter to speak, spotlighting how critical trade is in the number one agricultural district in Congress. And the barriers, Smith says, hurt Nebraska farmers. Other countries tend to be very protectionist. They want to keep our products out. That's why we need these trade agreements so that we can get our products into these other countries. Canada's reluctance to import dairy products is a big sticking point. Another concern, rules for genetically modified crops, with countries all having their own processes for approval. When uh, China rejects the shipment or some other country rejects the shipment because they find an unapproved trait in, uh, in corn or soybeans. And so that it definitely uh, disrupts and hinders trade. Smith and his colleagues in Congress voted to give the president fast track power, allowing negotiators like Darcy Vetter to do their work without interference. Pushing forward to try and finalize that deal in a matter of weeks. We'll have much more on Steve's interview with Ambassador Vetter later on here in the show. Also, we'll catch up with Greg Ibaugh and how all of these efforts culminate with the governor's push to grow livestock. Now we're going to focus on Congressman Adrian Smith and his push to make biotechnology a priority with the Chinese president. Smith says, quote, China's marketplace presents enormous opportunity for Nebraska agriculture, especially with the third district being the number one agriculture producing district in America. The president of China was visiting D.C. this week. And now that Governor Pete Ricketts is back from his trip to Asia, he wants to push to have two trade missions each year. He believes that improving and developing trade relationships are some of the best ways to help Nebraska grow. Ricketts visited both China and Japan. Japan imports about 20% of Nebraska's beef and half of our pork. Ricketts visited a company interested in buying even more Nebraska beef. And while in Beijing, Ricketts talked about their ban on beef imports. Beef is Nebraska's largest industry and China is our fastest growing trade partner. Ricketts says opening the Chinese market to Nebraska beef is a goal that needs to be realized. Drones aren't quite ready to feed the world, but a Kansas College professor says they can really help crops, especially when it comes to insects. Entomology professor Brian McCornack says it's an important application because the world's population is projected to increase by 2 billion people in the next 30 years. He says in addition to targeting pests and other problems with production, drones should have the robotic capabilities to collect insect samples or set traps. A groundbreaking program that could help change how water is managed. It could make it so some farmers can buy and sell water to each other. Here's more on this pilot project with NTV's Megan Johnson. It's called the Groundwater Exchange Program, and it's not just new to the Central Platte NRD, but the general manager says to everyone in the country as they look at another way to best use water. 
It was a small part of the Central Platt NRD's board meeting Thursday, but Lyndon Vogt says their approval of a new marketing concept for groundwater is a big deal. What we're trying to do in this process is, is bring willing sellers and willing buyers together and, and, to, and to figure out what the real value of water is in our district. The groundwater exchange program is meant to benefit producers, Vote says, letting them sell or purchase extra water for one growing season. It's not really a, a place for buyers and sellers to meet. It's a place for buying, buyers and sellers to register their water for sale and then the computer uh, make the best match as possible and, uh, while keeping our surface water whole. Vote says when they talk water, it doesn't mean pumping it and hauling it in a truck to the buyer. It's more of a numbers game. Through our co-heist modeling process we have, we can measure the effects on the rivers from different wells and the stream depletion factors of different wells. So really, you're not physically transferring water to them. What you're agreeing to do is not use your water from your well, which allows them to pump additional water from theirs or to irrigate additional, additional acres that they would have not had available to them for that year. Central Platte expects water managers in other states to be watching how it works and how they tweak it as they move forward. This is the first market of its, of its kind in the nation, and so it, it really is a pilot project for us. Uh, if, if it goes over well, we will certainly continue to do it. Vote says they're still working with the consulting firm on getting the program going, but hope to have it running by December or January, and the State Department of Natural Resources is funding the project. The body of a 79-year-old man was found in a grain bin northeast of Albion. The Boone County Sheriff says Edwin Correll of Albion apparently became trapped after entering the bin to loosen corn that wasn't feeding into the auger. The sheriff says his office heard about the situation after a neighbor noticed corn being taken from the bin was spilling out of a grain truck and the truck driver was not around. Every year about 62 farm workers are electrocuted in the U.S. and many, many more injured. This is according to Labor Department statistics. As harvest season begins, the Nebraska Public Power District is urging farmers to take precautions. Here's what you need to keep in mind. Review all the activities that are around power lines. Set up your equipment at least 20 feet away from them. If you need to be closer, contact your power provider. Always use a spotter when moving large equipment or high loads near a power line. Never attempt to raise or move a line to clear a path. Also remember, non-metallic materials will conduct electricity depending on dampness and dust and dirt contamination. These are reminders that safety is a priority, especially out on the farm or ranch, any ag business. Here's some words from Nebraska Extension. And this week is Farm Safety and Health Week. Sherry's joining us here from Nebraska Extension. And so tell us, there's a slogan. What's the theme for this year here? Well, this year's theme is a little broader, kind of emphasizing the whole realm of safety. And it is, egg safety is not just a slogan, mm -hmm. it's a lifestyle. Um, the idea behind it is that safety needs to be part of our business practice, just like any business that is going on. And that sometimes farmers and ranchers don't put that into their, their idea of what the business is. Mm -hmm. um, many of our ag businesses have found that, that safety rewards them with productivity and financial, um, uh, better financial environment. And I guess it's about time that we farmers and ranchers get on board. We should probably get <laughs> on board with that. So any um, programs, anything to really spur the discussion on this? There is. Um, by the middle of October, there will have been 14 safety days that I counted in s South Central Nebraska. Now that doesn't include the 12 or 14 across the rest of the state. So we're, we're talking to kids and we're getting some of those things um, going. Most of our FFA chapters have had some kind of safety awareness this week. They have um, worked on all kinds of different little projects to just get the word out. And some of our national projects, um, some of our national organizations have worked on it. Our local chapter of South Central uh, Farm Safety for Just Kids put together a poster that we oh. distributed through co-ops and uh, grain handling places where the harvesters are going to be. About 80 jobs at a Cargill beef plant will be eliminated. This is due to the plant becoming an operation for cooked meat. The company says the project will begin in December. Cargill says workers who lose their jobs can apply at one of the company's other plants in the region and relocation help will be provided. It will expand plants in Wisconsin and Texas. 
You may have remembered we've talked a lot about the livestock matrix. Well, now the Department of Agriculture is looking for people to be on the livestock development matrix committee. The law charges Nebraska Department of Agriculture with the development of an assessment matrix that can be used by county government officials for sitting livestock operations. The committee provides consultation during the development process. If interested, submit a cover letter outlining your qualifications and resume to NDA by Wednesday. Well, Hayes County is the 35th county to officially become livestock friendly. Governor Pete Ricketts was in Hayes Center to make it official. He says the county's location and abundance of natural resources makes it a perfect fit. Livestock friendly county program gives counties an extra promotional tool to encourage livestock operations. Counties seeking a designation, complete an application, hold a public hearing, and pass a resolution in support. Congressman Adrian Smith says she's a pretty big deal. We're going to talk a little bit more with the trade negotiator when it comes to agricultural issues. That's coming up. And of course, we have a look at your forecast. Find out if it's going to continue drizzling like this anytime this week with Kent Fountain. Stick around.